hello so this is my second topic on the lecture that is the laser and i am starting with the absorption for radiation so what is mean uh, mean by the absorption of radiation so absorption of radiation means that the electron in the ground state after absorbing some energy that return back to the Ex excited state that is the higher energy level so when there will be the ground state and when there will be the higher energy state there is the main two reason is this that the electron orbiting very close to the nucleus which are very close to the nucleus they are at the lower energy state and which are at the far away from the nucleus they are at the higher energy level and electron in the lower energy level need uh, much more extra energy to jump to the higher energy state and from where they are getting that extra energy they are getting the extra energy from the heat from the electric field or the light they are getting the extra energy from the heat electric field as well as the light so this is the absorption of radiation now consider there is two energy level one is at the higher state and one is at the lower state and consider n is the number of the energy levels one is for the higher number of the electrons in the energy level one is at the lower state and one is at the higher state so basically the electron in the ground state is called the lower energy electrons and electron in the excited state is called the higher energy electrons so what happens in this case that the absorption of the, please look at the diagram that the ground state electron absorbs the incident photon and they are f moved to the higher state okay so this happens after the absorption of the radiation that is the radiation is nothing but the incident photon okay so the ground so we are calling it as ground state electron and we are calling it as higher state electron and they are the two energy levels okay so let us discuss the conditions and the and the detail part of it now see that electron in the lower state cannot automatically jumps into the electron of the higher state electron that is in the lower state without any energy can't go into the electron of the higher electron into the higher state then so we can say that that the photon at the incident light photon and the incident photon the energy that is produced from that incident photon is nothing but equal to the energy difference of two energy levels okay the energy needed to forward the electron from the lower state to the higher state is nothing but that amount of the energy needed from the photons okay so the absorption of the radiation so this can be said as a condition so the absorption of radiation or a light occur if the energy of the incident photon matches with the energy difference of the two energy levels the absorption of the radiation or a light occurs it occurs only if the the that that i have told it is written same same to same the energy of the incident photon that matches with the energy difference of the energy two level at that time only the absorption of radiation occurs the absorption of radiation will not occur if the energy of the incident photon is less than the energy difference of the two energy levels so this is how the ground state electron when absorbs the incident photon and they go, go to the higher energy state now here is just spontaneous emission so basically what is basically spontaneous emission the spontaneous emission is nothing but the process by which the electron in the excited state return to the ground state by emitting the electron that is naturally now the electron can stay here for a very short time and the electron the the electron reach, reaching from the excited state to the ground state and that time period is known as the lifetime of that excited electron and the lifetime of the electron in the excited state is nothing but 10 to the power minus 8 second okay now you will see that what happens after that lifetime now see that 
After the lifetime of the SR state, they return to the lower energy state or ground state by releasing the energy in the form of photons. So when that short lifetime is over, that is 10 to the power minus 6 seconds, they all return to the ground state after and after returning to the ground state, they release the energy just to in the form of photon. The electron moves spontaneously from one state that is higher state to a lower state and the emission of the photon that is the photons are emitted that are having quite naturally and we have no control over them that when the photon will emit we have no control over them it occurs naturally and the light is considered is incoherent or original light why is it incoherent because it has a random change of phrase between them okay so what does it mean it means that the photon emitted is exactly do not follow in the same direction as the incident photon so that it is incoherent it does not make a same phrase angle between them okay as it does not maintain any phrase angle so it is called as ordinary incoherent light if i see this diagram see the higher energy state after the finishing of their lifetime they return to the ground state and after returning to the ground state they release one photon that is emit one photon okay and that's how the stimulated sp spontaneous emission occur uh, now we we'll go on to the stimulated emission now see the stimulated emission so stimulated emission is a process by which the incident photon interacts with the excited electron and forces it to return to the ground state and it is basically a artificial process so what is mean by this so what about the stimulated emission that light is energy supplied directly to the excited electron instead of supplying it to the ground state electron Okay, so unlike the spontaneous emission, the stimulated emission is a natural process. Okay, stimulated emission is a natural process, where it is not a natural process, it is basically an artificial process. Now see that, up before the lifetime becomes over, if I give one incident photon over here, it, it can go from a higher energy state to a lower energy state and the two photons are emitted okay one for the given photon and another for the emission of the from the higher state to the lower state now see that two photons are emitted so in the stimulated emission the electron in the excited state need not wait for the completion of their lifetime because as it is an artificial process, they forcefully return the SRA state to their ground state before the completion of their lifetime and they, this is known as, this technique is known as stimulated emission, okay. Now let's see details and some conditions. When the incident photon interacts with the excited electron, it forces the excited electron to return to the ground state and this excited electron releases the energy in the form of light while falling to the ground state this is a one of the photon and another photon comes from the two photons is emitted okay so one photons come from the incident photon and another photons come from the energy release of the x state so there are two photons that is generated and but basically stimulated em emission is very fast because we are giving the photons earlier so um, that is needed so basically it, it could be fast compared to the spontaneous emission all the photon all the immediate photon in the simulated emission must have the same energy same frequency are in phase and all the photons in the stimulated emission travel in the same direction now the number of the photons in the stimulated emission num the number of depend on the number of the electrons how many number of electrons is there so in the higher energy level so for one electron is have a one so for a two or a more electron it will have a two or the more photon 
so basically if i consider it as one so it will give one electron so number of the emitted photon is nothing but equal to number of the electron in the excited state okay we can say it like this now see the next topic the next slide the light photons emitted move in the same direction as that of the simulated photon as it is a very artificial process so it maintain a certain phase relation same phase relation and so this light is can be called as ordinary co coherent light okay and so they are called as the coherent light so it amplifies the incident beam as the number of the photon is increasing there is a multiplication of the photons because see the next line two photon interact with the two excited two photon interact with the two excited photon and it gives us the two photons okay it means that uh, these two two photons will get separated and it will again interact with the another excited photons and form their excited electron and form their another is coming okay another two photons is coming so these two photons okay give rise to four photons and by this way it forms a chain huh? and it has high correlations and high directionality now the population inversion population inversion is the process of achieving the greater population of the higher state as compared to the lower state so we are process of achieving the higher greater population of the higher state this is a process uh, as compared to the lower state this is compared to as the uh, population inversion now population inversion is mainly used for light amplification if the energy state is of the higher state the electron becomes more so it can increase the light okay so it is using the light amplification it can be used for the laser amplification also now consider our two energy level although you all know that a population inversion cannot be achieved in a two level system but we are considering a two level system just for simplicity is x1 e1 and e2 e1 is the lower energy state and e2 is the higher energy state n1 is the number of the electron uh, in the energy state e1 and n2 is the number of the electron in the e energy st state e2 okay number of electron in the energy state e2 so n1 is the for uh, e1 and e n2 is the number of the electron for the energy state e2 now the number of the electron per unit volume is an is in an energy state is the population of that energy state so basically it is saying that the number per unit volume in a per unit volume how many electrons is there in a certain energy state is nothing but the population of that state okay now going to the next slide and that was that's one i am telling that the population inversion cannot be achieved in the two level system and by under normal condition under normal condition the n1 is always greater than n2 that is the number of the electron in the lower energy state is always greater than the number of the energy in the higher energy state okay under the normal condition now it can be said that when the temperature increases the population of the higher state become greater in the case of two level system but it can it cannot be said said that that population of the higher state in two will never exist the population of the lower state in one it can suppose we consider the population of in a normal condition population of higher state b 2 okay and population of lower state b 20 so after when the temperature is heated some of the electron of the lower state goes to the higher energy state so if i consider that that seven electrons have gone so the higher state will become nine higher state has become 9 while the lower state has become 13 but see in this condition although it has gone although it have increased the population of higher state increased but it has never exist the population of the lower state okay and now 
when there is no optical gain the always the n1 equal to n2 when there will be uh, no optical gain optical gain is and also the n1 and n2 equal to 0 when there is no optical gain this can be only possible if you have the measurable state okay naturally n1 and n2 become equal okay now if you see the Boltzmann equation and if you consider the temperature to be infinite then the n1 equal to n2 so it can be said that at very very high temperature the n1 becomes equal to n2 that is the number of the population in the lower state become equal to the number of population in the higher state that is very very high temperature from the Boltzmann point of view we can say when the temperature is infinite so basically we have just said that the we need three or more energy state to achieve the population inversion we can't do with two energy state the greater is the number of the energy state the greater is the optical gain so uh, an another optical gain can be achieved if the number of the energy state is more then the optical gain can be achieved okay and now there are sub uh, so let's tell about the certain special properties there are certain substances that the water electron once excited they remain in the higher energy level or are excited state for a longer time there are substance substances which live in the excited state more than 1 10 to the power minus 8 second and such substance is called the active system and which are the mixture of the different element such mixture is formed when the electronic level are modified they are acquired the special properties when they acquired such special properties such mixture is formed and this is known as a three level laser and the four level lasers okay so this three level laser and four level laser can be achieved in two part one is the they live in the excited state more than 10 to the power minus 18 second okay and that's how they only form the metastable state so what is the metastable state that we will discuss in our next lecture please stay tuned and go on with the lecture 3 soon please subscribe and comment on my video that how the video is about and thank you Please stay strong for the next video.